good afternoon and welcome to this very important webinar on the future of media and entertainment in the post-COVID world. I'm Dr. Sriparna Barua from the Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship. And uh, this webinar, at the outset, I would like to mention that this webinar has been planned with the support of two advisory committee members of NERIS, Dipanita Jaiswal and Tanushri Hazarika. I really help, thank you both uh, Dipanita and Tanushri for helping us to conceptualize as well as helping us in identifying the speakers and the moderator. So thank you to both of you. We have with us a very eminent uh, panelist with us today and the moderator of, and a moderator of repute. But before we go forward and introduce the speakers, the moderators, I would like to request our director, Dr. Abhijit Sharma, to just give a brief about NERIS and uh, a brief welcome to everyone. Yeah. yeah thank you, Dr. Shiparna Borwa. A uh, warm welcome to everyone uh, for this webinar, very important webinar on the uh, future of media and entertainment in the post-COVID world. Uh, we are all aware that media, entertainment, music is part of our lives, particularly in the Northeast. I think that is something as a, I mean, as a resource that we have. We are creative people. And I guess, uh, uh, so we need to really now find out ways and means particularly in this trying times, uh, how to maneuver ourselves and go forward. Uh, I'd like to thank the eminent panelists who have taken the time out, particularly Karma, who has agreed to be part as a moderator. And of course, the other, other people who are around, Ajay, whom I know personally, and the others. Uh, just a brief uh, about uh, Neris for the other panelists who are not aware of it. Uh, this is such, uh, this has been actually organized under the uh, aegis of NERES. NERES is Northeast Region Entrepreneurship and Startup Summit. Uh, this has been conceived as a as a platform for you know new guys, new startups who are wanting to uh, have fantastic ideas but don't have a means to commercialize it. And we are sort of providing the platform. We means I and FINA, the industry body, got together, conceptualized this. And uh, it has been sponsored by NEC. The final outcome would be to you know, give 20, 5 lakh each to 20 entrepreneurs whom we are taking through a series of pitching rounds. A lot of them are here today. And a lot of them are also engaged with media and entertainment. Uh, so I'm sure that this... Uh, one and a half hours or so deliberation would be really useful. We have the eminent panelist, Reniki, who's herself engaged with the massive media house, Karma, who's a moderator. And I'm sure this is going to be really fantastic for all of us, a learning time for all of us. Uh, all the best wishes, and I'm looking forward to actually listening from all of you. Thank you, and welcome again. Shiparna. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so on behalf of the Indians of Entrepreneurship, I let me welcome the panelists for today's webinar. We have with us Ajay Chaman, who's the founder of Half Step Rock. We have Tarsem Mittal, the founder of TM Talent Management. Then we have Riniki Bhuya Sharma, Chairperson, Managing Director of East Pride Entertainment's Private Limited. Right. We have uh, Samuchal Kashyap, award-winning filmmaker. So these are the four panelists. We will come, welcome all of you for today's webinar. We're looking forward to inputs and also for us to take forward as to how we go ahead uh, dealing with entrepreneurs from this segment, from the media and entertainment sector. And just to have a feel about how uh, we have also given some time to two enterprising uh, women from this region who are in the media and entertainment sector. One is Afrida from Inside Any and Mona Lisa. They are going to share a few experiences about how they, we've given them about two to three minutes time to just share what they are thinking about and post COVID, how do they, how do they look at their business? So that is also one thing which you have added to this webinar. And uh, before I hand over to Karma, who will do the rituals of at, actually introducing all the other panel members, let me on behalf of Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship welcome and thank you Karma for agreeing to moderate this very important webinar. Uh, Karma Paljor, Paljor, as we all know, is the is a face from this industry. I think each of us know him well. He's the chief editor of East Mojo and the co-founder of Acme Infotainment. Uh, Editor-in-chief East Mojo is also the team leader of the Impulse Model Press Lab Core Committee. 
He's an award-winning journalist with over 20 years of experience working with CNN, IBN, CNBC TV 18, CNN, IBN News 18, and the Times of India. He won the prestigious Ramnath Goenka Award for his excellence in journalism twice in 2011 and 2014, and the ENBA Award in 2013 and 2014. Uh, he was a judge, the Indian television reporter in the year 2011 and he's a Shevening Scholar and an Espen Fellow. So very fortunate to have you, Karma, with us. And I'm, not, I'm sure you're going to do full justice and I'm, entrepreneurs are going to get a lot of ideas as to how they can go forward to the very promising sector, which has a lot of scope in this region. And before I hand over to you, Karma, let me also um, put, uh, introduce the team behind Neris. We have Anusuya Mahanta, Amitabh Dutta, Sagar Kumar, who has put in all their efforts in making Neris have happen because initially we were thinking about doing it physically and then we had to do it digitally. And also Plavon, who has been helping us to moderate and you know coordinate and make this event happen. So over to you, Karma. Thank you. I always forget to unmute. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity uh, to host this uh, interesting session. Uh, we at the media are at a very interesting time. Uh, while most of the digital media are seeing, and television of course, are seeing an increase in numbers, the same cannot be said as far as revenues are concerned. Uh, there are huge challenges. We are seeing a world of difference now, a changing world. Microsoft recently fired most of its employees in the US and they have been replaced by bots. So bots are doing news for Microsoft now. Uh, similar challenges are being seen across India as well. Uh, we are going to see the first big film with starring Amitabh Bachchan being released on an OTT platform. Now that does not happen because Amitabh Bachchan is meant to be seen on the big screen. So as the Chinese say, we are living in interesting times. With that, I'd like to introduce and welcome our panelists. Uh, we have uh, Riniki Bhuya Sarma, Chairperson and Managing Director of Pride East Entertainment. Uh, she'll be our first speaker. We also have Samujal Kashyap, who's an award-winning filmmaker. Ajay Chanam, who's uh, founder of Half Step Rock. Uh, Tafse Mittal, uh, founder of uh, TM Talent Management, a hugely successful company. We also have two journalists, uh, Afrida and Manishla Das, who will be making their comments in this show. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, first introduce uh, each of the speakers in detail and then give the person about six to seven to uh, ten minutes, depending upon uh, how much time you'd like to speak. I'd like to first introduce uh, Riniki Sharma, ma'am. Uh, she's the chairperson and managing director of Pride East Entertainment Private Limited. This perhaps is the biggest media and entertainment uh, giant as far as the Northeast is concerned. Uh, so uh, she is heading the company, uh, Satellite Television Network, under the flagship of this company. They've got News Live, followed by Rang, Ram Dhenu, Indra Dhanu, Northeast Live, which is the latest English channel, which they started in 2018. The company also has a regional daily newspaper. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. Uh, the mic is yours. Uh, you have uh, six to ten minutes. Okay, thank you, Karma. And uh, I would like to thank Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship for hosting the show and uh, thanking me to be eligible to be a part of this webinar, and which is, in fact, uh, today where I uh, Come or where I'll be speaking to you uh, on the future of media and entertainment during the post COVID period. Like, uh, as, as you have said, Karma, that different Chinese things that we are living in a very interesting period. Yes, we are. Actually, right now, if you say that we are on a very paradox uh, situation kind of a thing. Because, uh, when we know that, like when we knew that COVID-19 has hit the entire world in a very pandemic state of affairs, first we thought that it was a chapter that's soon going to be over. 
but now as gradually as we see as time has passed, it has uh, almost it's looking like to become a book so we don't know the, what the future is or like all for us but here uh, one thing that's very interesting like as you said that i'm leading Friday's entertainment and we have got five television network and satellite television plus a regional media here one thing i would just like to mention that although we are going through a period of crisis we are going through a period of financial a lot of uh, major downslides but when uh, the tv screen was having its competition with the doors knocking with all the platforms and online digital one good thing that happened is that the people immediately due to the covid due to the confinement you could see a 10% rise in the increase in the viewership it is my view due to the instinct of a human instinct or you can call it a survival instinct for the information to need to survive in this kind of phenomena and uh, as a result the viewership it was on the rise and on the other side when it comes to advertising or other side when it comes to financial advertising as a private player so we have reached the all time low in 12 years of our existence but still uh, somehow we are like trying to cope up with the situation by trying to go at a very snail snail pace you could rather say but still the future is really unknown for us but uh, leading and especially when it comes to press and the leading newspaper which we have already got in which is like it's one of the very highly circulated uh, newspaper nyomya bharta and we have got a lifestyle magazine also aina jibol or and here the only thing is that due to the covid period which we had uh, so initially when we started it like when we were about to distributing the newspapers people like we never used to touch the paper thinking that we were carrying covid in the newspapers and then we went to a phase where we have to sprinkle that all on top of it then the people who stand on the sun and take the newspaper so we reached that stage but slowly things are sometimes it takes a sunny side sometimes it takes a very gloomy side so the prediction is very unsure so we are still sailing and we all know that the all waiting like a storm is about to come the storm is hitting us and we don't know how to walk out of the storm we are still in a very much a part of it but let's see keeping our fingers crossed and uh, looking at various uh, surveys and looking at various uh, reports coming all across the world regarding the future we don't think it it is still a big question mark and uh, hope to sail out and hope to bail ourselves out just uh, it's, it's the unknown and uh, it is all the faith will and the uh, strong management that will lead us through with taking lots of strong decisions at a time lots of important uh, cut out at the time and lot of things that needs to be taken in care of so still looking ahead and still thinking in the process of thinking how to bail us out of the situation thank you thank you thank you ma'am for sharing and being so candid uh you know with the struggles that you are having right now i really appreciate that uh, our next speaker is uh, uh founder of uh, tm uh, Ent- uh, talent management tm talent management uh, tarsam mittal uh, one of the most prominent uh, talent talent management organizations in the indian music industry scenario they represent about 23 uh, tarsam correct me if i'm wrong or if the count has gone up uh, 23 artists musicians from the indian music and live entertainment industry he is also a uh, version several initiatives in the indian music business in recent years which include entertainment consultant music plus truly comical truly musical llp all about music and bollywood uh, music project tarsa it's over to you thank you karma first of all uh, it's so nice to see so many uh, people again 
Arinik, Wo, Afrida, Tanu, all of you. I'm I'm so happy to see you all again. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for making me a part of this. Uh, I I feel that if I this association was there when I was working, it would have helped me for sure. Uh, and entrepreneurship is in a very very important subject which needs to be taught. And thank you for organizing such thing. Uh, I am not going to talk about the problems which we have because I'm sure you know we all are aware and we've been discussing the problems. And uh, this is a pandemic, and the biggest problem is uh, uh, the gatherings. You know, the biggest thing is the gatherings. You can't meet people, you can't touch each other, you can't hug each other, you can't uh, you know do things. And unfortunately, the business which I operates in, ninety-five uh, percent of our revenue uh, comes from gatherings. So if there are no gatherings, there are no business. So and uh, we will never be a priority for any administration. It should it should not be. So the biggest priority is always the health and safety of people, and entertainment uh, comes uh, later. And even if entertainment uh, is a priority, it will be digital or it will be on phones or TVs or anywhere. But live events or anything to do with uh, gatherings will always be the last priority for anyone and should be. So we are actually in a, a deep problem. Everybody who is a part of the music industry would know. that uh, the event management industry is estimated to about 60 to 70 billion dollars in india which is about uh, 3 lakh crores the number sounds very uh, uh, you know very big but that's a, a number which has been estimated by a lot of agencies but typically if you look at the music uh, uh, industry and the artists who are dependent on music uh, and if you divide it into numbers let's assume artists who make it to 8 to 10 crore rupees or more a year there are about 20 artists like that in india then as you go down the numbers are more uh, it's about a 2000 to 3000 crore rupees industry for uh, musicians and uh, artists now that is uh, completely zero right now i'll say at uh, almost zero uh, these are the problems now i'll straight away get into the solutions what you can do because everybody is uh, we are talking in every session people want to know that what can we do we know that these are the problems but what can we do uh, so every uh, uh, every calamity every uh, you know pandemic or every problem always have opportunities it, it is purely on the way you look at it uh, yeah, it will be wrong to say that they, uh, we are not in a complicated situation we have to pay salaries we have to run our family we have to be safe it's very difficult but there are opportunities number one uh, virtual concerts uh, it that's going to be a new normal so but, like for example uh, uh, two years back or maybe six months back if you would have called all of us and wanted to do a virtual session i really don't know how many people would have agreed to come or how many people would have agreed to even uh, see the uh, see the virtual thing in the same way uh, three months back if you would have told somebody in november that listen we are doing an artist virtual concert and you have to pay ticket and come uh, nobody would even, uh, have even thought that it's possibility today people are feeling that it can be possible yet people are not buying tickets but it is possible uh, it depends on how can we improve the experience of the performance that is something which we have to work on second thing is that uh, the business of artists uh, i purely feel is a, a connection between somebody uh, who has the ability to entertain people and people who love that artist whether it is a magician or a comedian or a, a you know singer or an actor or anybody Uh, that connection will never change uh, people will be more depressed now more stressed now they need more and more entertainment now the format will change the uh, communication will change but people situations are not changing so if you are an artist who are who is who is or who are able to connect to your fans digitally there are other ways of making money uh, brands is one of the biggest of them because today the brands might not be uh, willing to invest a lot of money on holdings or lot of money on community events but they might be willing to invest on influencers okay who can influence people who can uh, connect to their fans and audience uh, there are a lot of apps you will be surprised to know uh, you know facebook instagram youtube are three or four things which everybody knows but there are apps like hello which is a regional app which is more than 70 million users there are apps like free uh, share chat like key the uh, bigo live you videos there are like innumerable apps star maker uh, smule and all these apps in india are extremely popular and uh, i mean on an average they have about 50 million to 100 million users each of them 
and uh, uh, there are a lot of people who have become big stars out of that like a uh, average tiktoker uh, makes more money than a very very good actor in the country i mean uh, i abhi ethics ethics ki baat baad mein bhi kar sakte hain ki ye sahi hai ya galat hai i really don't know i mean i don't want to comment on that but i'm just saying the opportunities uh, that you know there are a lot of other opportunities it is, it is about our attitude or your thinking uh, the biggest benefit is the reach and accessibility Uh, i was in guwahati in 2003 uh, for the first time i came to bombay for you to start an artist management business you have to come to bombay on those days today you don't have to to become a popular actor or a popular singer you had to travel to big cities you don't need to somebody sitting in barpeta can just simply upload a video and if that video has the ability to connect with audience in us he will become a famous star in in a, in a matter of you know minutes or days or months it the reach and accessibility has become very very easy there are hundreds of technologies which allows you to become a great editor i mean I'm, i can't compare them to the uh, you know the great ones but you have the accessibility to do a lot of things uh, sitting at your own home uh, the the next part which is which i love the most is that there is no waste of time now uh, earlier commuting or going out to meet people was the biggest uh, time thing so let's assume if you are working 8 to 10 hours a day you would spend 4 hours in commuting but now you can actually work for 8 hours a day if i call somebody uh, who is a very influential person and 6 uh, months back i would tell that person that listen i want to do a online meeting with you that person might feel hurt or you know bad about it that listen this person is insulting me but today that is possible and people are more receptive more open to meeting and doing calls and uh, 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 discussing and uh, you know uh, uh, it's uh, at the end of the day it's it's about only two things for me uh, yes there are problems we are financially uh, the entire industry is in a very bad shape uh, uh, purely who are dependent on gatherings but two things which you need to keep in mind it is your attitude if your attitude is positive you will be able to look at solutions you will be able to find new ways to do things and second things you don't have to have the fear of failure so and i'm i'm just saying it because uh, i'm assuming that it's all the entrepreneurs who are listening to this that the biggest problem which entrepreneurs uh, fail is the fear of failure it's okay to fail it's fine i mean i have failed more than 100 times i still fail i will keep failing but we'll have to keep trying that's it for me. thank you so much for bringing in so much positivity darsham i love it i love the thank ideas you. Uh, I guess, uh, as uh, Riniki Ma'am said, it's just about you know holding on uh, to today, and you are pointing out that there's a new world to discover. I guess we need to start building our ships and uh, sail out uh, in in a virtual world. We don't at least at, don't, at least try. Yeah, we don't actually try. physically build a ship. Our next speaker is uh, Samujal Kashyap. He's an award-winning filmmaker. Started his career in Bangalore. as an editor in the year 2007 editor director uh, he did his first uh, documentary film tezpur 1962 which got the national award as the best investigative film in 2015 right now his uh, two films maya baidev correct my pronunciation ha huh? i'm still learning yeah. assamese ha huh? uh, a short f- a sh- a fictional film and the other one uh, i'll need help in this one samujal uh, Mulwa, the adorable Mulwa, one. The adorable one. A documentary is doing the festival rounds. Uh, Maya Baidev won the best regional short film in the recently concluded sixth Rajasthan International uh, Film Festival. So, with congratulations, I hand over the mic to you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. It was so nice listening to Riniki Baidev, Tarsem, and some more to come. And uh, yeah, actually. Uh, our work uh, has started slowly like government is allowing us to do outdoor shoots now but uh, uh, it is difficult to do certain kind of work like uh, big shoots are still not possible we can't uh, do many kind of shoot but yes we can do many kind of works now so uh, basically uh, if we uh, divide our work into stages like we have the actual shooting to do then we have the post production then we have the promotion and then the comes to the releasing platforms so now uh, like at least the good news is that we can start shooting some kind of films which involves less number of people so 
I am also extremely positive that things will slowly start changing and uh, institutes like uh, Pridest Entertainment and uh, other, uh, other production houses and uh, TVCs will slowly start coming up and things will change. Like, and uh, we have this medicine coming up any, um, any moment, I guess, in like September of this thing. So let it be like, uh, let's hope by December. And uh, till now, Assam uh, is in a better stage, I believe, compared to the other places uh, because of the extremely well-managed situation of government and the extremely talented team that we have. So uh, when this lockdown started, I had finished a few projects and then I could shift to my post-production, but uh, that without a team, I had to work all alone. So uh, right now I have done a shoot like two days back, but it was extremely difficult for me to do that shoot because, you know, uh, we are uh, to maintain social distancing and do a shoot. It's extremely tough. Like uh, you have the focus puller and the camera person and the director standing almost together. And it doesn't happen if you don't stand together. And a team from Mumbai was remotely supervising our, our works as it was from the Axis Bank. So I was feeling bad also, like the situation has come to such a stage. But at the same time, I was very happy that I could get back to what I love. I love to shoot. So uh, uh, I feel uh, when such things happen, uh, whatever it is like, uh, let, uh, let's not consider only the entertainment industry. So when such pandemic or when such worst, worst situation happens, I feel uh, the best way is to get back to our basics. Like we work to entertain people. Uh, let's forget what kind of what kind of range, what kind of uh, production size, and what kind of you know means uh, uh, production. Where if we manage to do some good stories uh, with whatever uh, we can now, uh, with whatever resources we have, slowly we can start building again or rebooting again the whole system. And uh, I guess. Uh, this uh, releasing platform regarding the releasing platform as Tarsem also said that like gatherings gathering is a must for our kind of work yes uh, for our kind of work is also the cinema theater is a must so uh, I don't know when this theatrical release would be possible next I don't see maybe uh, one year maybe six months maybe four months from now on but it's very difficult to guess but there are some good news as uh, again I uh, uh, like there is OTT right now, which is a very positive thing which happened like uh, two, three years back it would have happened. We couldn't have imagined what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what would have happened. So I just like to, I would just like to share uh, a small uh, screen. Uh, can I do that? Uh, Karma, I'm sharing a small uh, yeah. screen. If Plabon, if you need help, Plabon yeah. can help you. Yeah, or you can share the screen. So uh, basically, while coming to this OTT platforms, uh, I would like to suggest that, like, uh, as we all saw, there is a huge, uh, huge number of uh, subscribers increase in all the OTT platforms in the last few months in the last uh, quarter of 2020, like it's almost like 5 million, 6 million of uh, subscriber increase. Like this big films, Gulabo Sitabo, as you have mentioned, and Sakuntala Devi next is all set to release over the OTT. And uh, Netflix, if I point out, I can show, like it is uh, the subscriber, the subscriber is increasing by almost 6 million in the last three months. Same with Hotstar and Disney, the subscriber base is increasing. So uh, what it suggests in the regional level now. So what I miss in this regional level is that we miss an OTT platform. We miss a solid OTT platform. So uh, I feel we are a bit little late in creating a very good robust OTT platform in the regional level. 
but I still feel if uh, uh, people like Riniki Baido and others uh, get into this OTT uh, business and uh, if they uh, give us a very systematic and uh, and uh, you know means uh, this platform for this uh, kind of work we can uh, we can start creating content and releasing and release this uh, films there are many unreleased films in assam also which can be released in this ott platforms we don't know till when the hall should be opening but it's still i feel a very good time to uh, you know create a ott platform in assam so uh, another thing like uh, as uh, tarsam said like it's a very uh, uh, irony that uh, like we have all uh, like uh, we are almost in a non essential we are listed in the non essential service but uh, people lived on our stories on our uh, uh, films and uh, uh, so uh, it's not all about entertainment there is like we put dreams into people minds we put uh, hopes into people minds and we uh, basically uh, we basically are like doing trying to do certain kind of job which is very difficult very uh, it requires certain amount of hard work so i feel uh, slowly things will change and we will restart everything thank you thank you for that uh, we certainly hope so uh, samujal i was talking to uh, you know surjit sarkar day before uh, yeah. in an interview and uh, he was telling me how gutted he was uh, that you know his uh, film is not releasing and it shot with the wide angle uh, with the best dolby atmosphere surround the uh, sound and everything but then he was saying how immediately they adapted and uh, made the film ready for the small screen yeah. so i guess it's all about uh, being able to adapt and move quickly and they were able to do that uh, thank yes. you so much i'll come back to you i have some follow up questions yeah um, our next speaker ajay chanam uh, of uh, founder of half half step rock is the founder and managing partner it was established in 2015 a leading independent record label based in bangalore dedicated to resurrecting a vibrant mainline music industry in the country he's also india's first independent singer songwriter on uh, vivo and his first original singer yepal ranked amongst india's top 15 most popular music videos on mtv indies he's worked with uh, late uh, former president dr abdul kalam in setting up india's first telemedicine network in partnership with the isro uh, ajay it's over to you thanks uh, karma and uh, thank you abhijit for uh, arranging this uh, platform uh, you know as this covid was uh, unfolding uh, even we at hostive rock felt this uh, requirement that somebody should speak for a particular segment that i am going to talk about uh, very soon and we realized that this could just be the right uh, platform so so just to give you a perspective of half step rock uh, we are a record label uh, and when we say mainline music music it basically means music which is not connected with uh, movies right that's how it is in the rest of the world and that's what we have been trying to do we have partnered with stanford and harvard from 2017 onwards they have given us a lot of information and the reason you don't see a lot of action from our side is because in our research we found that a lot of things a lot of solutions have been hurriedly slap dashed into the system and they have all failed because i think the primary reason they have failed is they have not understood the problem very well and what we have done in the last 5 years is we have invested in understanding what has happened wrong in the indian independent music scene and what could be those catalyzing changes that we could bring about as a company in making those changes and some of those learnings have got very strong and, and relevant for something and that's what i'm going to try and connect in the next 5 or 10 minutes let's first understand the entire media industry entertainment industry music uh, uh, not uh, uh, not being an exception is ultimately held together at the core by a group of artists we have to first understand the challenges that an artist be it an actor and musician a poet a lyricist a filmmaker a dop a color grader an editor we have to understand who are these people what are the challenges they face how much money do they make and what happened to them when covid happened and you'd be surprised to know that 
most of them, 99% of them, were already lived hand to mouth before the COVID came. Right? Uh, if you, even if you just look at the Andheri East area, at any point of time, there are three lakh budding actors, aspiring actors, who are going and auditioning for a role which pays anywhere between 500 rupees to 2,000 rupees for a complete day shoot. And if they get one audition in a week, that's a good number. Four auditions in a week is a good number. They are borrowing money from family, from friends. They already have debt. And the last two months has seen no action, no money, which means a community which has already been in a huge trouble, which was already stretching very hard to survive in the hope that one day they would make a good uh, scene and they would then pay off all their debt and they would then be a star. They are already in a very tight spot right now. And while the whole country is talking about this large uh, migrant workers and because that's a thing that's visible to us, the artists don't qualify as migrant workers because they most probably belong from good families. They have left good jobs. Uh, they have left jobs with software, with the normal uh, nine to five uh, kind of jobs. And they are pursuing these dreams, right? They have nowhere to go. They have already exhausted all their means to beg, borrow, steal from their friends and family. Now, if that community does not survive the next six to eight months, which I'm sure the world would have a uh, cure by, we would actually be in a situation where the industry may survive, but the core part of the industry may have disappeared. It would be like operation is successful, but the patient is dead. And perhaps this is the time when we need to take some cues from some countries worldwide, right? And I thought that New Zealand amongst all the countries has put a very good example in this particular case. The government has recognized that the creative field has been impacted more than the rest of the field. Like one of my uh, panelists, I think it was Samujul Kashyap who was saying that the creative field suffers more and it's very true. And the whole world, especially New Zealand and Australia who have done a lot of research, they have set up websites like I Lost My Gig where every musician was able to come and give the amount of money that they have lost. They came up with a phenomenal amount of money just in a couple of days, over 2000 crores, which people had just lost because of lost gigs. And if you add to that shoots, which were not done, uh, you know, makeup artists who did not go for a shoot because the shoot was canceled, uh, the DOP guys who did not go because the shoot was canceled. I mean, the money is, is too big as far as India is concerned, right? Now, what New Zealand has done is they have understood that the problem will fade over the period of next six to eight months. But they have understood that in this next six to eight months, if you do not come and assist the artist community, the artist community may not survive. We may find a cure for COVID, but we don't know what is the amount of creative talent that we will lose in the process. We had just started to see independent cinema, great movies, which were coming out without big names and without big uh, actors. Uh, and they were giving great performances on Netflix, on Amazon Prime. Indian cinema was coming to age and so was music. So I think that the first thing that I want to contribute here is we should not forget chronology, priority, amidst all this. I understand COVID is a large problem and it has affected all spheres. I understand it has affected big media houses. I understand it has affected the media companies. I, was, I understand it has affected everybody, but everybody is not equally vulnerable. We have to address the most vulnerable first, the lesser vulnerable second and so on and so forth. The most vulnerable in the value chain, as per what I feel, we understand as a company, having invested five years working with the top universities in the country, in the world, also in case studies from the world over is the artist community. All of us put together have to first work out something for the artist community. So, so, New York, uh, so uh, just to give you some numbers to give it a perspective. New Zealand with a population of just 48.9 lakhs people has invested, has committed 175 million over the period of next three years to reinvigorate the art sector in the country. 175 million basically turns out to 1,225 crores. So if you divide it per lakh, if we are talking about 25 crores per lakh population, which means in Indian parlance, if you say, the government would have to invest 3,38,150 crores to save this industry. 
that is the proportionate amount of money that the government of New Zealand has found out that if you do not help the artists, this industry will die. Now, how are they doing it? They've got a very nice scientific approach to this. First thing they are doing is they are having public platforms where artists can come and they can tell the kind of money they were making. And they can also tell what is the loss that they are going through right now. And basis that there is a first fund called the Resilience Fund. This is a fund which is given to artists, directly to the artists, not to a company, first to survive. Something like what US does when people lose jobs till the time they get the next job. I think this is very critical. I don't know the amount that we can generate. I don't know whether it'll be the government or I don't know whether it'll be a pool of fund that media companies and interested parties, including the corporates, are going to create this fund. But this is something that we today who are discussing today have to have some deep care so that the next layer can take it to the next layer. Because if you don't do that, we are actually putting the cart before the horse. We cannot worry about an industry if the people, the proponents, the, the propellers, the fuel of the industry dies itself. Uh, and then obviously you guys, the, this information is in the internet. I don't want to go too detailed. There is various funds. It's not just the artists. They are also giving certain amount of money to the tour operators to tell them that, hey, you know, even though uh, you know, you may not have as many people coming for your shows. You know, this much money government will subsidize for you if you have to do an event. So there's a lot of money, a fund which has been allocated for tours and events, right? There's an amount of money, a fund which has been allocated to radio channels to say, hey, continue airing, you know, and even if the advertisers are not coming today because money has frozen and everybody's thinking where to invest money, this is the amount of money that government will give it to you so that you continue airing art, right? And then over a period of next 60 to 70 years, they also have a large chunk of money where they're going to innovate. They're going to bring in thought leaders and they're going to say, how do we ensure that next time around when this comes, uh, we don't take such an impact. So, so they also have a R&D and innovation fund, but they're very clear. They are rolling it out from July. They're not, they not waiting. This thing is going to hit the streets immediately. Artists are going to get some money in their pockets immediately. And over the period of next six, seven months, when hopefully we get the vaccine, they are not stopping there either. They are continuing with their R&D program to onwards to find a solution for the next round of pandemic, which most probably will hit because pandemic, this is not a one-time event, right? This, is, this has happened because of certain things we have done wrong as a civilization, as a society, and these manifestations will, all, will only get more and more frequent unless we change the way the humankind uh, functions, right? So my, to sum it up, I think the key focus should be we have to understand Corona, COVID is not a forever situation. The greater danger is the next six to eight months has the potential of, of damaging the creative talent to a very large degree. We cannot quantify it right now, but, but uh, that, is the, that is a challenge. It is, like, it is like a very incisive attack, which is going to happen very fast and it is going to leave a very strong impact. And if we can sustain the the loss uh, during the next six to eight months, I think the world will see a better time. I don't think we have to worry about uh, changing of platforms. I think the, nobody can take away the chive music where you see the guy and the, the thing thumping next to you. I don't think online music can ever replace live music. I think that we, this is bound to come back. But I think the greater danger is in saving the artists at this point in time. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Very thoughtful. I know, Darsan, smile away because I keep forgetting to... The same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, very insightful. I don't know if our country will be able to raise uh, 3 lakh uh, uh, 30,000 uh, crore rupees. Uh, but it's an interesting thought that, you know, we all can uh, collectively look at. Um, I think uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Af Afrida now of uh, Inside uh, NE one of the senior journalists uh, here in Assam, and uh, she wants to uh, come in and uh, talk about her entrepreneurial experience uh, from being a very senior journalist, having worked uh, with uh, big uh, media organizations like Ashtak to starting her own. Uh, Afrida, it's over to you. Unmute, Afrida, unmute. Okay, good to go. So hi Karma, thank you so much. Hi Tarsan. Hi. Uh, 
Riniki ma'am and everyone in the panel and thanks to Shripana ma'am as well. Uh, uh, to start with being a first generation entrepreneur, I started my journey in the year 2016 after 18 uh, long years of journalism. And uh, after three years of proprietorship, I have decided this year to make it a private limited enterprise. And on March 17, it has become a full form on the uh, enterprise. And then COVID outbreak and challenges has happened. It's very unfortunate. We all are facing challenges. And uh, to make it a private limited enterprise, it was in a hope to expand my enterprise. That's the whole basic theme. But we all are facing challenges like uh, the whole world. So now uh, coming to the challenges and uh, in terms of uh, media consumption, we are getting lots more traffic in terms of media com com uh, consumption. We are getting lots more readership in the website and the Facebook and all others. But uh, the with the economy already, which was under stress, uh, the key adders, uh, pan sectors have been a significant fraction for media like us who uh, are dependent to remain afloat also in this uh, country, uh, are dependent on the sectors like FMCG, finance services, automobile industry and e-commerce. But I think the recovery of such sector is most important which will help us indirectly to survive if we talk about the advertisement revenue and uh, which will help us to keep us afloat. In terms of, uh, we have tried like subscription model and all those things, but in digital media, the, the subscription is not possible because it's an ocean. Lots of digital media houses are coming up to whom to subscribe and whom not to. It's your own face value only where you get some subscription amount, which will not help you to sustain. But 